Mr. President, which companies do you want to spend more on data in particular? Just look at the chart. Take a look at the chart. It's public, and many countries are not paying what they should. And frankly, many countries uh, owe us a tremendous amount of money for many years back where they're delinquent, as far as I'm concerned, because the United States has had to pay for them. So if you go back 10 or 20 years, you'll just add it all up. It's massive amounts of money is owed. Uh, the United States has paid and stepped up like nobody. This has gone on for decades, by the way. This has gone on for many presidents, but no other president brought it up like I bring it up. Uh, so something has to be done, and the Secretary General has been working on it very hard. This year, since our last meeting, Commitments have been made for over $40 billion more money spent by other countries. So that's a step, but it's a very small step. It sounds like a lot of money, and it is. But it's a very small amount of money relative what, to what they owe and to what they should be paying. And it's an unfair burden on the United States. So we're here to talk about that, and I'm sure it will be resolved. I have a great confidence in the Secretary General. He's worked very, very hard on this, and he knows it's a fact. But uh, I have great confidence in him and his representatives. Would you like to say yeah. something? First of all, it's great to see you again, Mr. President, and uh, good to have you here for the uh, summit. And uh, we are going to discuss many important issues at the summit. Among them is defense spending. And we all agree that we have to do more. I agree with you that we have to uh, make sure that allies are investing more. The good news is that uh, allies have started to invest more in uh, defense. Uh, after years of cutting defense budgets, they have started to uh, add billions to their defense budgets. And uh, last year was the biggest increase uh, in defense spending across Europe and Canada in a generation. Why was that last year? It's also because of your leadership, because your uh, clear message. And, okay. uh, and, uh, they won't write that. But no, right. I have said it before, and, and the, but the thing is that uh, uh, it really has a, uh, it's, it, your message is having an impact. Uh, and uh, we are going to build on that to make sure that we have further increases. Uh, you initiated last year that uh, all allies are going to develop national plans on how to spend more on defense. And based on these national plans, we now estimate that the uh, European allies and Canada will add 266 uh, uh, extra US dollars uh, for defense from now until billion. 20 uh, billion US dollars until uh, until 2024. So, so this is really adding some extra money. It helps, uh, and we are moving in the right direction. But we still, uh, but, oh, but we still have to uh, to do more, and that is what we're going to address at the summit later on today. Let me also add that that strong NATO is good for Europe, but it's also good for the United States. Uh, the U.S. military presence in Europe helps uh, to protect Europe, but it also helps the United States project uh, uh, power to the Middle East, to Africa, and uh, I think also that. Uh, Cloud, the military cloud of, uh, uh, of Europe, uh, the economic cloud, the political cloud, also is helpful dealing with, uh, with Russia. And we look forward to the meeting we're going to have with President Putin. Uh, and I think that leaders are also looking forward to uh, your thoughts about the meeting with President Putin at, uh, later on. Uh. Well, I have to say, I think uh, it's very sad when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia, and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. So we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting all of these countries. And then numerous of the countries go out and make a pipeline deal with Russia, where they're paying billions of dollars into the coffers of Russia. So we're supposed to protect you against Russia, but they're paying billions of dollars to Russia, and I think that's very inappropriate. And the former chancellor of Germany is the head of the pipeline company that's supplying the gas. Uh, ultimately, Germany will have almost 70% of their country controlled by Russia with natural gas. So you tell me, is that appropriate? I mean, we've, I've been complaining about this from the time I got in. It should have never been allowed to have happened. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they will be getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO, and I don't think it should have happened. And I think we have to talk to Germany about it. On top of that, 
Germany is just paying a little bit over 1 percent, whereas the United States, in actual numbers, is paying 4.2 percent of a much larger GDP. So I think that's inappropriate also. You know, we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting everybody, and yet we're paying a lot of money to protect. Now, this has been going on for decades. This has been brought up by other presidents, but other presidents never did anything about it because I don't think they understood it or they just didn't want to get involved. But I have to bring it up because I think it's very unfair to our country, it's very unfair to our taxpayer. And I think that these countries have to step it up, not over a 10-year period, they have to step it up immediately. Germany is a rich country. They talk about they're going to increase it a tiny bit by 2030. Well, they could increase it immediately tomorrow and have no problem. I don't think it's fair to the United States. So we're going to have to do something because we're not going to put up with it. We can't put up with it. And it's inappropriate. So. We have to talk about the billions and billions of dollars that's being paid to the country that we're supposed to be protecting you against. You know, everybody's, everybody's talking about it all over the world. They'll say, well, wait a minute, we're supposed to be protecting you from Russia, but why are you paying billions of dollars to Russia for energy? Why are countries in NATO, namely Germany, having a large percentage of the energy needs paid you know, to Russia and, and taken care of by Russia. Now, if you look at it, Germany is a captive of Russia because they supply. They get rid of their coal plants. They get rid of their nuclear. They're getting so much of the oil and gas from Russia. I think it's something that NATO has to look at. I think it's very inappropriate. You and I agree that it's inappropriate. I don't know what you can do about it now, but it certainly doesn't seem to make sense that uh, they pay billions of dollars to Russia, and now we have to defend them against Russia. You know, NATO is an alliance of 29 nations, and uh, there are sometimes differences and uh, different views and also some disagreements. And the uh, gas uh, uh, pipeline from Russia to Germany is one issue where allies uh, disagree. But the strength of NATO is that despite these differences, we have always been able to unite around our core task uh, to protect and defend each other because we understand that we are stronger together than uh, apart. Uh, I think that two world wars and the Cold War thought us that uh, we are stronger together than apart. Um, but how can you be together when a country is getting its energy from the person you want protection against or from the group that you want protection against? Because you understand that uh, when we stand together also when uh, dealing with Russia, we are stronger. I think what we have seen is that... No, you're just making Russia richer. Well, you're not dealing with Russia, you're making Russia richer. Also, I think that even during the Cold War, uh, NATO allies were trading with uh, Russia. Then there have been uh, disagreements about what kind of uh, trade arrangements we should, uh, we should go into. I think trade is wonderful. I think energy is a whole different story. I think energy is a much different story than normal trade. And you have a country like Poland that won't accept the gas. You take a look at some of the countries, they won't accept it because they don't want to be captive to Russia. But Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. So we're supposed to protect Germany, but they're getting their energy from Russia. Explain that. And it can't be explained. You know that. We have to talk about the billions and billions of dollars that's being paid to the country that we're supposed to be protecting you against. I think it's something that NATO has to look at. I think it's very inappropriate. It doesn't seem to make sense that uh, they pay billions of dollars to Russia, and now we have to defend them against Russia. And they put the natural gas hub and the oil hub right in Germany. Earlier at the NATO summit, President Trump calling out European countries purchasing energy from Russia, specifically Germany, while benefiting from U.S. protection. Now, Gardner is the director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation, joins us now from London. Does the president have a point? And were you surprised he brought it up over what seems to be breakfast? I think the, uh, the president certainly has a very strong point in his remarks about Germany. He directly attacked the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, with it, which is a pipeline uh, which will run from Russia to Germany, bypassing U.S. allies in Eastern Europe and the Baltic states. And so uh, the president was absolutely right, actually, to condemn the pipeline. This is a Russian project. The Germans are fully collaborating with us for business uh, purposes. This undermines, actually, the pipeline undermines the security of the NATO alliance. And so the president was 100% right to, to criticize this pipeline and also to call on the Germans to increase their 
pitifully low defense spending, actually, which stands at just 1.2 percent of GDP. Compare that to the United States, 3.5 percent of GDP on defense. The Germans are not pulling their weight in Europe. The NATO alliance is fundamentally important to the United States and to the transatlantic alliance, but we need to see all members of the NATO alliance right. pulling their weight, investing more in defense, especially the Germans, the, the so-called economic power of, uh, of Europe. They did get a quick reaction force together, land, air and sea, that's going to be able to react within 30 days. They did start bulking up cybersecurity, both things with the president wanted done. And they have increased defense spending, even though they, uh, to about $150 billion combined, even though they haven't hit all the thresholds. Are they on the right track? Would the president benefit from emphasizing some of the positive or continue the way he's been doing it so far? Well, the Germans certainly have uh, announced some limited increases in defense spending, but they're way, way below the level, for example, of, of Great Britain, which spends 2% 2 2 of GDP on defense. And so uh, I do think that uh, the president is, is right to, to really call out countries like Germany on the defense spending issue and at the end of the day as well I mean the Germans are operating an appeasement policy towards Russia with the Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline um, and and so this tough message from the president directly to uh, right. to the Germans I, I think uh, will be will be effective there will be many uh, US allies in Europe who will fully support actually the US uh, position on this so uh, the president right. is not isolated Poland, in Europe, right. far uh, Poland from and, yeah, Poland many and Turkey's, US allies will support him and now real quick Poland and uh, Turkey just said yeah we got a problem with Germany as well uh, real quick you said that the the alliance is obsolete so you think it should be expunged no no I mean the the NATO alliance is not obsolete uh, the NATO alliance is fundamentally important to US strategic uh, interests it's vital to the defense of the free world but we need to see all NATO members investing more in the NATO alliance, investing more in defense, right. uh, investing more in the future of the transatlantic alliance. But, but NATO is, is far from obsolete. It is a vital uh, alliance for the United States. Uh, but we need to see all right. members working with the United States to strengthen the alliance. All right. So far, a, a rocky start, but a very direct, candid start. A lot of this stuff is usually done behind closed doors with this president. He lets it all hang out. Uh, now, it's very interesting. Now, Gardner, thanks so much. My pleasure, Ryan. Thank you. Ich möchte aus gegebenem Anlass hinzufügen, dass ich erlebt habe auch selber, dass ein Teil Deutschlands von der Sowjetunion kontrolliert wurde. Und ich bin sehr froh, dass wir heute in Freiheit vereint sind als die Bundesrepublik Deutschland und dass wir deshalb auch sagen können, dass wir unsere eigenständige Politik machen können und eigenständige Entscheidungen fällen können. Und das ist sehr gut, gerade für die Menschen in den neuen Bundesländern.